Hello everyone, this is Lewis coming to you with the book of Hebrews once again. I wanted to, before we go on into chapter 4, I wanted to go back to a point that I think I've missed. Uh, I, I, I was about to go into it last video, but uh, some, somewhere down the line, I, I think I forgot you know, my, my, uh, my, line of, my line of thought and didn't even touch on it. I did mention it last in the last video, 3 and 14, Hebrews 3 and 14, for we are made partakers of Christ. And then I read the rest of the sentence and then I started expounding on the latter clause rather than the earlier clause. And it says, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So I kind of went off on a tangent about, you know, holding fast to the faith and, you know, the confidence and that we are his house at and we are, you know, partakers of the same that we are together with him. But I didn't go more in depth as far as the word partakers. And so the, in the Greek, the word partakers is the word, um, if I can remember, met, I think it's called metakoi. Or meta, yeah, I think it's metakoi. And basically it's being a partner, partner with, an associate. And so, in essence, for we are made associates of Christ, you know, partners with him. And so, how is this made? How is this done? Um, if you notice, in verse 14, it says the same word that I've been harping on since the beginning of the, uh, the study of Hebrews. How that Jesus, who is the Son of God, who it was the Son of God, who is the Word of God manifest in flesh, he was made flesh. And in his beginning, he was made a couple of things. Because he was born in this world, he was made, because he was born in this world, a couple of things in Scripture. I, I mentioned uh, that he was made of the seed of David. How do we know that? Because he was born in Mary's lineage, Mary being a, a direct descendant of David. And even in reckoning, if he was to be brought up under Joseph... Joseph was also a man, I think, that he was um, under David's lineage as well. And so both Mary and Joseph, if I'm not mistaken, are both descendants of, of um, David. But that's not the concern. The concern as a matter of flesh is the woman. Because as a matter of the father, he is spirit. And so what Jesus is, is a new man. He's not like the old man, Adam, although he is exactly like Adam in that he is flesh. But he is a new Adam because he has no sin. He was not born in sin. And so he was born of the Holy Ghost. Other than that, because of his begetting, he was made of the seed of woman. Made of the seed of a woman. Therefore, we can... Uh, we can uh, we can say that because he was manifest in flesh, made manifest in flesh, he was made of a seed of woman. This is just the truth. Uh, he came out of a woman. <laughs> uh, and that woman was a uh, direct descendant of the lineage of David. And so he was made of the seed of David. He was also made under the law. And so because he was made of this woman and the direct seed of the lineage of David, he was considered a Jew. And so because he was a Jew, he was one of those promise, you know, promised children, promised seed, you know, of the, the, of the stock of Israel. And so he is God's people. He is God's person. He is God's man. And so he, he is made under the law according to Galatians. But then when we see the, the, the terminology being, uh, being pushed forward, we see in the book of Hebrews, as the, the Hebrews writer wants to make sure that we understand that Jesus is better than we, any concept we could ever know, he says that he was made so much better than the angels. And so how does he go on and explain this? Verse 7, chapter 2, verse 7, he says, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thine hands. Verse 9, also, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. This is just reiterating, reiterating verse 7. 
And then verse 10, also because of his begetting, because of who he is in this earth and what has, he has become. His becoming is all of this entangled in one person. And so Jesus, he was made the captain of their salvation. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And so Jesus was made the captain of their salvation because he made it per, um, because it was his their salvation was per, uh, perfect through sufferings. And so Jesus was made to go through suffering and he was made the captain of their salvation through those sufferings. Then you have, and you, and you see you start to see the Hebrews writer transition into a thought of entangling not entangling but using that same psalm for thou hast put all things under his feet for in subjection which was uh, originally as a psalm written concerning man or humanity and so how is God going to bring this scripture to pass for humanity so he brings in one who is a good man who is going to be the man and, and that's the man that was made manifest in flesh from his pre-existing uh, nature as the Word of God. So the Word of God was made manifest in flesh, and we called him the Son of God at his begetting. This day have I begotten thee. And so and also on that same day when he was begotten, when he was brought forth into the world, the angel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And so when he was begotten, he was made a lot of things automatically because of whom, from whom he was begotten, where he was begotten, uh, what lineage he was begotten, under what law he was begotten. All of these things made a whole lot of sense when you start to see who this Jesus is and why he is so strategically the one and the only and the best, according to the Hebrews writer. And so verse 14, I should say verse 11 of chapter 2, he says, For both he that sanctifieth, talking about Jesus now, and they who are sanctified, talking about us, because now we are sanctified through the word that he spoke, through the word that he manifests, through the words that he preached, through the works that he had done. We are sanctified through Jesus. And so now he that sanctifieth and, and they that are sanctified, both, both, both are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. And so this is why this man, Jesus, could be called brethren or brother because he was just like us, a human. He was just like the Jews. And that he could relate to the Jews. And he was just like us to the rest of the world because he was human just like us. And because of that, a lot of things are now translatable to Jesus. And Jesus is translatable to God. Therefore, God, through Jesus, can translate unto us. And so this also uh, brings to mind the idea of the translation of the saints. Uh, or the idea of the translation of the son or the idea of tr being translated into the kingdom of God. If you Google search or do a, a Bible app search of the word translated, you'll see how, how things are translated or transferred from one understanding to another because of a medium, which was Jesus Christ. He is the middleman. He is the one who steps in the middle and speaks for both parties. And we see this clearly in that he is a man, but he is also God within man. And so verse 14 takes it from verse 11 because now he includes both of us in one. It says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And so Jesus took on human flesh in order to partake, be a partaker of flesh and blood 
and that he will suffer and he will die and he will bleed and that blood will be an atonement sacrifice offering for our sins uh, rendering the devil powerless because we believe he is powerless now now that Jesus got the victory uh, rendering the devil powerless because he can't wave death over our heads anymore he can't wave our sins over our heads anymore because we are no longer in this world in, in, in regards to judgment. We are now in Christ in regards to God's judgment and his wrath. And so if we're in Christ, we are shielded so long as we remain in Christ. And this is where, where um, last week, on the last video I was talking about holding fast to confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Talking about being in Christ Holding fast to that idea, verse 14 also, also brings out the word, and let me go before that. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 also brings out the word partakers. Wherefore, holy brethren, who is he talking about? Us. Specifically, the author in this, in this work is talking about those, again, contemplating on leaving Christianity and going back to Judaism. He is saying, wherefore, holy brethren... Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Then we jump down to the third time that the, the author mentions the word partakers. He says, verse 14, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And so we must remain in faith in Christ. Now, I wanted to on that point bring out something that's found in 2nd Peter it's the same word parta uh, partakers same word partakers uh, I should also uh, make it known that partakers in the book of Hebrews is the word metakoi but uh, in 2nd Peter Second Peter, uh, uh, no, no, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, in Hebrews, the Greek word is metakoi, or metakos, but in Second Peter 1, 4, we'll see that the word partakers is from the word koinonos, and koinonos means the almost the exact same thing, except it's like a, a, a variation, I think a masculine variation, but it doesn't really matter because it's saying the exact same thing, it's a properly... A properly translated word uh, that we are partners with him partners with Jesus Christ it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these the promises you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and so how do we escape the corruption that is in the world through our lust Remember, it is we are only subject to temptations if we give in to the lust of our flesh. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. If we give in to those things, we give in to our flesh. We give in to the the things that are that are out in the open air in the world, and so we we succumb to the things of the world through our flesh. But we are no longer in the flesh. If you rem remember how spiritually minded you ought to be, uh, we are now partakers of the divine nature according to his words and the word of promise. And this is why in the, in the book of Hebrews, he goes to great lengths in saying, if the word that was spoken by the angels was steadfast, how much more would the word of Jesus Christ be to us you know, who he came in the flesh and was the, the, the most express form of God's word and understanding and visually correct way of being for us. How can we neglect so great a salvation coming from this man, Jesus? There is no more, no other more excellent way to come unto God, but by Jesus. And so uh look at look at also look at again um uh i think this is where i was at, uh, actually talking about and I, I think and i gotta make a correction because in one of my past videos i said adding to my faith 
or adding to our faith was in one of the, in, uh, I think I said, uh, Timothy. And I was incorrect in saying that it was actually in Second Peter, the idea of adding to your faith. Meaning this faith does not just, is not just something you say and say, oh, I believe with my heart and uh, confess with my mouth and all this other good stuff and that's it. No, faith is something that needs to be worked on. It's added to and it's built upon and you continue in it. This, this goes in line with the Hebrews writer in the steadfast, holding fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end and being made partakers if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Talking about holding on to our faith in Christ Jesus. Whereas in Peter, 2 Peter, oh man, I lost my page. In 2 Peter it says that we are partakers of the divine nature. Not that we have become gods, but that Jesus had made have, have made a way where he can bring us or sons unto glory. This is also in, uh, written here. Where is where is that? I just read that, didn't I? Wait a minute. I know I just read it. Oh, yeah. Verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. That, that, that uh, middle clause, to, uh, in bringing many sons unto glory, can also mean we are being partakers of the divine nature. And so now we are we the sons of God, like John says. John says, now are we the sons of God. It may not yet appear what we shall be. When well, we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We, we par are partakers of his divine nature in that we are now made sons. Because Jesus was made a man and suffered and, made, and did everything he did in his flesh. He, was, he died the death of the cross, an atonement for our sins, was buried in the grave, three days later rose from the dead, and then was received up into glory, having give, been given all power in his hands. Now Jesus is out of the world, gives the promise to the, the, the disciples, says, go wait in Jerusalem and wait for the promise uh, of the power of God to be, uh, to be poured out on you on high. And so now you're going to be partakers by my, pro my, my promises, by my word, and all of his word is spirit. When you when you when you when you think about what the spirit says, the spirit doesn't speak of its uh, of itself either. The spirit speaks expressly what the Father wants to speak, just like Jesus spoke expressly what the Father wanted to speak. And so this means that both Jesus and the Holy Ghost are considered uh, mediators, intercessors. God the Father is not an intercessor. There is one God and one man and one mediator between God and man. That's Jesus Christ, Jesus, the, um, the, the Savior. He, he's the, the, the mediator between God and man. And because Jesus, the mediator, promised that he would send the Holy Ghost and that he would not leave the comfortless but come back to them and bring, uh, bring to them another comforter, which is not another person, but just him coming back to them in another form. He came back because he is that same spirit. Jesus Christ is that same spirit. And that same spirit came to dwell inside of the apostles and the rest of the disciples, as many as, as would believe and take hold of that gospel and, to, and the promises unto you and to your children and to those that are far off, even as, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Even you right now under the hearing my voice, listening to this YouTube video, or either in listening to on YouTube or Facebook or WhatsApp. I, I send this also to WhatsApp people. But um, even you can be partaker of the divine nature. Not become a God, but become a son of God. Lowercase S-O-N. Because of the son of God. Capital S-O-N. Jesus. Because the son of God was manifest in flesh, made flesh, now you have the opportunity to be made something.
And so we go back to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, and says, And we are made partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning. And so this is a conditional thing. Um, we are made partakers of Christ. We are his house. If we are made, we, we can be made partakers of his divine nature. If you hold fast to your faith. And then even Peter in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, add to your faith this, that, and the other. Matter of fact, let's, let's read a couple of things that Peter says to add, you can add to your faith. 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, and besides this, giving all diligence, diligence, meaning work, work at it. Oh, add to your faith virtue and to add to virtue knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and patience, godliness, and godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, hath forgotten that he was purged from his, from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence, again, work at it. To make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So the, the fear here is that you might fall if you forget these things. If you don't give diligence. If you don't, uh, if you don't make your calling and election sure. For so an entrance. Now this is what happens when a person gives diligence and work at it. And has intention to move forward in your faith and add to your faith. Your intention is there. God sees the intention and he will do this. He says, for so an entrance shall be ministered, supplied unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So not only is Jesus the door of the kingdom, but he is the very means by which we can enter the kingdom and live prosperously in the kingdom and remain in the kingdom if we just hold fast to him and follow him and don't waver, give diligence, add to your faith, all of those good things. Now we go back to Hebrews. And so all of this is something that we need to uh, also keep in mind. And because we are made partakers of Christ. Now look at verse 14 again. For we are made partakers of Christ. I'm going to show you another, another uh, principle here. Because we are in Christ. We're going to go to one of the Gospels. If I can find it without having any problems finding it. I should have marked it. Oh, wow. Bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. You know how you have those Bibles? This is a brand, one of those brand new Bibles that every page is sticking together and, and it's not going to the chapters. You know, you, you could just flip the, the Bible a certain way and it goes right to your chapter. Not so. <laughs> not so. I got to look for it and I got I to gotta leaf through the, uh, through the pages for what I'm looking for. So forgive me. I think it's in a, yeah, I might want to, and so I wanted to make also mention that in these videos, like I just did just now, there may be times where I may have forgotten something and I will go back to it. And so I'll probably mention it in the title that I went back to that particular verse and then go on into chapter four. But um, if only I can find my notes on something that I wrote in one of these pages instead of going through these pages like this. Oh, you know what? I think I know where it is. It's in Matthew. And I'm looking all over the place. And it should be one of those easy chapters. Here we go. No, that's not it. Nope, it's not there. Maybe it's Luke. It's 
and also when I do these videos, I hope that whoever is listening to these videos is being blessed by the, the verses of scripture and the understanding that God has given me. And uh, if you have any questions, any questions at all, feel free. I, I, and, and if you got something to add, feel free to add because I don't know everything. Uh, it could be something that I missed. It could be something that I said that may be an error. I'm, I'm not afraid to be corrected. And so if you guys got a correction for me, that's fine as well. And I'll talk about it. Nobody, nobody's, um, nobody be judged for, you know, having a correction. If anything, that's a good thing. We sharpen each other. We make ourselves better. See, pride is one of those things that I hate. And God hates it. But um, I join my God in hating it because pride hinders growth. Some people, they, they can, and, some, and, and this is one of those pet peeves of mine, that if you read the Bible, if you made a mistake reading the Bible and you skipped a sentence or said something wrong, it's okay to go back over and, and start from the beginning and read it. Because the scripture is more important than me sounding right. I don't care how I sound. As long as that scripture. And I can't seem to find this thing for nothing. And I know I wrote something on it. Oh my Jesus. Or maybe I wrote it in my other. Because I bought two of the same Bibles. One for home and one for the car. And they're not Bibles with like footnotes or anything. These are just straight up Bibles from like Family Dollar. And um, I bought these Bibles for like eight dollars, ten dollars, and they're, they're the best Bibles to get actually, because they don't have a whole bunch of people's thoughts and ideas. So I might just chalk this video up to me going back to that verse, and then go and do another video. Wow, how is that I can't find this? It, it, and it's it's a scripture that I want to go over because oh wait a minute no wow And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chalk this video up to me talking about uh, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14. And then I'm going to come back with another video concerning that very, because it's going to go into the next chapter, you know, seamless anyway. Um, it's concerning Jesus being the rest of God. And it's like, come unto me all ye that labor and are of heavy laden and I will give you rest. And uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and my yoke is is easy my burden is light and I will give you rest unto your souls and so being that we are partakers of Christ we are partakers of the promises and the words that Christ actually said and so when we come to him we shall have rest and this negates the idea that we have to keep a Sabbath that the, the Hebrews kept we don't keep Sabbath we're not that people we are a people that, that does not abide by the rules. We abide by the love. And the love, you know, and keeps, and keeps us in line. And so we keep a rest that they know not of. For if that rest was the rest that they were supposed to be, and there would not be another rest that they were talking about. And this is where Hebrews chapter 4 uh, makes abundantly clear. And also, we're going to probably touch on Galatians about um, being judged for, you know, um, it could be in Colossians or Galatians, but being judged uh, in respect of days and, um, and new moons and Sabbaths and stuff like that. Uh, we don't regard that stuff anymore. We are free in Christ Jesus. We are no longer in the world outside of Christ. Even the Jews at this moment are outside of Christ and they are lumped together in this dispensation with the world. And so for the cross sake, they are our enemies. 
but because of the election, we love them and we still keep them in mind, keeping in mind God's word, that his word is going to revisit the, the children of Israel. But at this time, we don't keep the Sabbath. And there's, a, there's cult religions talking about keeping the Sabbath and we need to rebuke that. And so I'm going to come back to you with another video. God bless.